I call the Honourable Member Order. I call the Honourable Member Simon Connor O'Connor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, well important to rise uh, tonight, and I want to acknowledge the uh, previous speaker who's fall into the uh, continual trap of the opposition who spends a lot of time saying what National supposedly is talking about. National is not against the workers. National is not attacking the workers. We're not trying to keep the man down. This is not that Hegelian uh, master and slave dynamic. That's always and all, only said only said by the opposition about the National Party. We are a party committed to jobs and to growth and to Kiwis who are prepared to be part of that growth agenda. So, Mr Speaker, I am pleased to stand here and speak to the Employment Relations Statutory Minimum Redundancy Entitlements Amendment and pleased to stand in opposition to this bill. I was standing... Um, I was standing in my office uh, an hour or so ago and I was trying to get my head around why uh, this bill had been put up uh, by Ms Maroney and others. Why, why was redundancy such a major issue for the Labour Party? Then it dawned on me. Then it dawned on me. Then it dawned on me, Mr Speaker. They're worried about David Shearer. They are actually compassionate, empathetic people worried about the impending redundancy of David Shearer. They are wanting to make sure to assuage their consciences that when they put the knife in his back and push him out in the coming days or weeks, that they will be able to look after him. They'll be able to look after him. Is it Ian Lee's Galloway? Is it Ian Lee's Galloway on the redundancy issue? We have to worry there. Is that the, uh, the issue of the day? Is it Ms Maroney? Is she concerned about the redundancy? For her to step away from whatever shadow policy she's involved with and needs at least four weeks support. We find very quickly, Mr Speaker, I think the motive here. This is an attempt to assuage one's Labour guilt uh, around redundancy for the impending uh, issues around their leader that we hear, and they've all of a sudden gone incredibly quiet. We wonder which one of the members across the way have already put their letters down. Mr Speaker, one of the key things that ultimately comes out of this is a mindset. It's a mindset. And we could summarise it we could summarise it like this from the Labour Party. It's very simplistic, very simplistic. Karl Marx would be pleased with it. It's the belief from the Labour Party that ultimately every employer is a crook. And it's also a belief that every employee is an idiot. And we know that neither of those two statements are true. We believe that employers and employees, Kiwis, can go around the bargaining table and have a conversation. We can stand on our own two feet, be we are an employer or an employee. The party in opposition, and the reason they are in opposition, is they don't believe that. If you listen to their speeches time and time again in this House, it's always about control. It is always about control. No one bar the Labour Party, Mr Speaker, has the knowledge, the insight, the, uh, the great belief other than them to make the decisions. The National Party stands here with a belief that Kiwis can stand on their own two feet and negotiate their contract. They can negotiate around their own redundancy payments if they so choose, as members, I'm sure, on all sides of the House have done in their time. It is about choice. You see, the Labour Party falls back again. They don't want choice. And why don't they want choice, Mr Speaker? Because they want to make it for everybody else. This is that hands-on politics, Mr Speaker. This is the hands-on politics we heard from David Sheer and the Labour Party. And I've said it before, they want the hands on your wallet and around your neck. This is all about control. And also, it lacks sort of economic understanding. You see, in a very basic way, if a company, a not-for-profit, any organisation, a small business, is moving towards redundancy, it means things ain't good. Let's put it in very simple colloquial. It ain't good. They don't have the money for these sorts of dynamics. Why are they going under? I'm not saying that's the case in every situation, but things ain't good to use sort of a bit of, I don't know, Kiwi colloquial speak for the opposition. So this bill is crazy at a number of levels. As Dr Calder pointed out earlier, Labor had nine long years to fix this. But as I noted too as I began the speech, I think I understand the motive. There's a lot of talk about making a certain leader of the Labor Party redundant and to assuage their guilt they are willing to uh, try to push this bill through to make the, the ending of David Shearer a little smoother.
Point of order, the right order. Yeah, I want to move an extension of five more minutes for Simon O'Connor. So the next five minutes, you can make more sense than he made in the previous five minutes. <laughs> now, now, the member knows that that's not a point of order. It's a frivolous point of order. <laughs> I call the honourable member, Sue Moroni. Thank Dan you, Mr Arquan. Speaker.